He had come nearer the edge of the sea, and wet sand slapped his boots. The new air greeted him, harping in wild nerves, wind of wild air of seeds of brightness. Here I'm not walking out of the Kish lightship, am I? He stood suddenly, his feet beginning to sink slowly in the quaking soil. Turn back. Turning, he scanned the south shore, his feet sinking again slowly in new sockets. He crossed to the bright side, avoiding the loose cellar flap of number 75. The sun was nearing the steeple of George's church. Be a warm day, I fancy, especially in these black clothes. Feel it more. Black conducts, reflects, refracts, is it? The heat. He turned away and sauntered across the road. How did she walk with her sausages? Like that, something. As he walked, he took the folded Freeman from his side pocket, unfolded it, rolled it lengthways in a baton, and tapped it at each sauntering step against his trouser leg. Careless air. Gentle, sweet air blew round the bald heads in a whisper, whisper. The boy by the grave head held his wreath with both hands, standing quietly in the great open space. Mr. Bloom moved behind the portly, kindly caretaker. Well-cut frock coat. Weighing them up, perhaps, to see which will go next. Well, it's a long rest. Feel no more. It's the movement you feel. Must be damned unpleasant. Can't believe it at first. Mistake must be. Someone else. Looking down, he saw flapping strongly, wheeling between the gaunt grey walls, gulls. Rough weather outside. If I threw myself down, Reuben Jay's son must have swallowed a good bellyful of that sausage. As we, or Mother Dana, weave and unweave our bodies, Stephen said, from day to day, their molecules shuttle to and fro, so does the artist weave and unweave his image. And as the mole on my right breast is where it was when I was born, though all my body has been woven of new stuff time after time, so through the ghost of the unquiet father, the sun looks forth. Ma! Almadano Artifone said. He gazed over Stephen's shoulder at Goldsmith's knobby pole. They looked from Trinity to the blind, columned porch of the Bank of Ireland, where pigeons ruku cooed. And there rises a shining palace whose crystal glittering roof is seen by mariners. And hither come all hairs and fatlings and first fruits of that land. For O'Connell Fitzsimons takes toll of them, a chieftain descended from chieftains. Thither the extremely large rains bring foison of the fields, flaskets of cauliflowers, floats of spinach, pineapple chunks, rangoon beans, strikes of tomatoes, drums of figs, drills of swedes, spherical potatoes and tallies of iridescent kale, and trays of onions, pearls of the earth, and punnets of mushrooms and custard marrow, and red, green, yellow, brown, russet, sweet, big, bitter, ripe, pomelated apples, and chips of strawberries and sieves of gooseberries, pulpy and pelurious, and strawberries fit for princes and raspberries for their cares. <laughs> 